As you can see, the gang's all here. We are breaking down some of our favorite political moments of 2017. Oh, shoot. We were supposed to have favorite ones? Aye. Okay. <laughs> uh, and we're going to go over some interessante Supreme Court cases to keep your eye on. The tax bill. And... What Some else? of the races across the country. Oh, yeah. Yeah, like the Atlanta mayor race happening uh, right now because it is Tuesday, December 5th. Welcome to Political Beat. You're tuning into the destination for TV superfan discussion, After Buzz TV. And now, let the buzz begin. Hey, everybody. Welcome to After Buzz TV's The Political Beat, the millennial show and podcast breaking down the latest in Washington politics and things happening around the world. And the country. Um, I can't believe it's December. It's really crazy. I'm your host, Drexel Hurd. You can follow me uh, on Twitter at Drexel Hurd. I am your moderate voice of the left. And I am the lefter of the left. I'm Chelsea Galicia. You can follow me at Chelsea Galicia. As you can see, we are joined here in the studio by our favorite people, the host of the Trump Report, Mr. Christian Blatt. Well, I'm my favorite person, but I didn't know I was anyone else's favorite person. And you're absolutely right. It is December mm -hmm. 5th. And uh, as uh, Scott on the other end of the table would tell you, there are 20 more shopping days for impeachment. Yep. So uh, <laughs> make sure that you uh, get everything in a row. And uh, you can find me at Christian DMZ and also the Trump Report Tuesday nights at 7 right after the show. Like tonight, right, right after right the show. After show. It'll look an awful lot like mm -hmm. this. It'll be the same four people. <laughs> but it might not be in this order. Might uh, not. As yeah. Christian yeah. said, uh, also on today's show, uh, another one of our favorite people, uh, Resident Information Bank, I like to call it. <laughs> uh, also from the Trump Report, and I guess from here, too, because he's mm -hmm. been on a few times. There's Scott Moore. Hi. Welcome to the show. Yes, thank you for having me back. It's going to be a fun night. Hello, S-Man 80. It's, it's yes. going to be good. Sorry we started so late tonight. Uh, if you're watching live, uh, there is a big fire here in California. It has stopped traffic all over Southern California. It so. was raining ash yeah. on me earlier mm -hmm. today. I, I was wearing light colors today, so I got in my car, and there was ash all in my car this morning um, <laughs> because I left my windows cracked just a little bit not realizing that there was a fire mm. happening outside. Um, I'm uh, I'm already like 200 days away from my wedding, too, which is really Yay. crazy. Wow. Wow. Under, under 200 days. Yeah, it's only been like 2,000 and a half days. days yeah. Right, and so now we're, we're in crunch time now, okay. so that's uh, really crazy going to the holidays. You guys have holiday mm. plans? Uh, I might go out of town. I may not. I may go down to Mexico. I need to get out of you LA. Might not be able and, to come back. And know what the there. <laughs> <laughs> at this point, you might want to rethink your holiday plans going down to Mexico. Just go down to the wall. To don't, the wall. Don't right. cross yeah, that's right. the wall. Yeah, just, exactly. Touch Lounge. the American side of the wall. Get, get a great hotel view of the wall. You right. know, right. take some photos. Wall, wall side. Uh, my uh, holiday plans are going to be uh, staying very close because, uh, as we'll talk about in the Trump report, I'm uh, suddenly a family of four now and not a family of three. And uh, since our last show a week ago uh, my wife uh, gave birth to our little daughter Lucy so uh, we're not we're not going anywhere like we're not even we're not even going to South Pasadena for grandma's Thanksgiving this year I bet well, that's all right well I mean I could go but the baby can't. I texted Christian earlier I said well Lucy must be running the house already right. oh she is she's definitely yeah. running yep. things yeah it's, definitely it's the year of the woman yeah. mm -hmm. running wasn't things it, wasn't that last right. year the year of the woman supposedly it was supposed last to year. be it was supposed, it was supposed to, to be, be. Yeah. and then it got prolonged and then it, got, it got pushed <laughs> and then it got pushed <laughs> <laughs> yeah, things happen. Uh, Scott, plans? Yeah, I'm going back uh, east uh, to Florida and North Carolina, nice. so it'll be yeah, crazy travel. Hopefully, you'll be able to come back from those too. Yes, I, I hope mean, so. Those, you know. Those I know it'll be, it might be underwater, yes. or you might be engulfed in Trumpism. Yes. Do you yeah, have your papers both. in order to come back from North Carolina? I'm going to try. Okay. Got to make sure I have everything in order before I leave. Yeah. Same <laughs> uh, thing. Hello to everybody in the chat room. It's uh, good to have you. Uh, a lot of our Trump Report uh, fans as well. Uh, the Demonat, our oh, yeah. uh, and storage yard resident. I believe mm -hmm. I saw him in the chat room earlier today. He says Mazel Mazel Christian. Uh, uh, on, on Lucy as well. He's uh, probably disappointed that I didn't name her Trump. <laughs> uh, or Melania. <laughs> well, that's true. Uh -huh. Or Melania. Funk is a nice name. Anyway. It is. It is. Uh, first up on the show, we've got some news out of the Supreme Court, so we'll talk about that here in a, in a bit. Uh, and of course, uh, as Pot Saves America calls it, the Donor Relief Act of 2017, mm -hmm. uh, as it passed the Senate last week. Um, so we'll talk about what's up next for that bill, and uh, we'll break down some of our favorite things uh, from the year as it is almost over. Uh, we haven't talked a lot about Supreme Court on this show because there hasn't been a lot of stuff that's been happening. Ever since, um, the ever since Gorsuch, Gorsuch, we yeah. tried to mm -hmm. pretend that the Supreme Court right. didn't yeah. really exist. Yeah, uh, typically mm -hmm. they only release rulings or hear cases about four times a year, I believe. Um, and so they're in that mode right now. Uh, early this year, like Chelsea said, the president nominated uh, and the Senate confirmed Neil Gorsuch. And then the court has heard almost about 50 cases this year. So, uh, Chelsea, mm -hmm. 
Uh, what are some of those uh, cases that we uh, so the, that's happened so far this year? So the big one that I am really, I don't know if I'm more nervous or excited about the gerrymandering case. This is um, Gill versus Whitford about whether partisan gerrymandering is constitutional or not. Can we divide up districts basically based on race? Um, I'm hoping that's a big no. But uh, we shall see. Well, wasn't it also based on partisanship mm -hmm, as well? Mm -hmm. it, was, it was, yeah. But partisanship is, um, I think they, that, that doesn't really matter. But they, this whole thing of like making really odd shit right. in, in a purposely to try and drown out the voice mm -hmm. of one and enhance the other, that is, no, no. And, and, That's a no-no. And, 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 no. no. and it shouldn't be, you know, right. should not be, it should not be allowed. And so this is just a natural extension mm -hmm. if race can be mm -hmm. uh, a, a factor in it. And the other one is class versus United States. So if you plead guilty, are you inherently saying that you are guilty and then you've waived some constitutional rights to appeal that, con or not appeal it, but later challenge the constitutionality of it? And we're going to find out soon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they haven't made a decision mm -hmm. on those I, cases yet. I, I don't know. I guess in that case, you're just like, I wonder if they will allow plea deals to be no contest rather than guilty pleas. Because that would get us around this issue. If you say if you go in and you plead no contest, it's not pleading guilty, it's not saying you're not guilty, you're just not up for the fight. And then you can go to jail or to have whatever sentence that you agree to with the DA, but as of right now plea deals are you have to plead guilty. Mm -hmm. And those were those two cases were from the summertime, and then the Supreme Court had a couple of cases uh, today and yesterday. Can you mm -hmm. talk a little bit about those? So the one, um, gosh, was it yesterday about the travel ban? Yeah. Yes. All right. So the travel ban is a thing. Um, <laughs> the yes. Supreme Court said that they're going to allow it to go forward right now, not permanently, but just sort of in this period of the other cases making their way through the courts. And they didn't really give much of an explanation, so we don't really know the reasoning behind it, uh, but they just are going to let it go. I, I saw, at least I was looking online, I saw that Justice Kennedy had wrote something, like wrote the writ out, opinion, opinion mm -hmm. out, but it was like a just an order basically, and then that Justice Sotomayor and Justice mm -hmm. Ginsburg did, would have denied it, right. and then Justice Gorsuch. Gorsuch had also wrote something, oh. I believe, and then Justice Ginsburg and Sotomayor had also would have denied that as well. No, it was it was the Chief Justice. It was John Roberts, yes. and then it was um, uh, Justice Kennedy, mm -hmm. which Kennedy surprised me. And he actually not only surprised me on that one, he also surprised me uh, in some of the questions that I read today from the next case. Mm -hmm. um, the cake? The, the cake, cake case. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the cake. I, I just, so in 2012, a um, gay couple went into a Colorado bakery to get a wedding cake, and the baker what is this first guy's first name? His name is Phillips, but that's his last name, I think. Said uh, no, and made it very clear that the reason he was saying no was because they were a gay couple. He, he is claiming that it is religious freedom for him to be able to deny creating, making this cake, that the act of making this cake is supporting a marriage that he religiously doesn't agree with, and the gay couple is claiming that this is discrimination based on who they are. So this is a big sort of test mm -hmm. of what's more important, religious freedom or uh, anti-discrimination. So do you guys think, and and we'll th we'll, I want to get everybody's thoughts on just how they're going to rule on this in a second, but if you look back at the votes that John Roberts had, I mean, John Roberts had on health care, which was a surprise vote. Mm -hmm. If you look at the way that Justice Kennedy has voted in when when cases involving LGBTQ Americans has come up, he tends to be on the side he of is, the America of the actual person. Yes, uh, he not wrote one. Of, I think I, th I think he may have been the author of um, the case. Over, 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 overfilled. Yes. Yeah. So he is sort of known as a pro LGBT, you know, protection guy, but yeah. he's also a First Amendment. Mm -hmm. Christian, did you by chance see the Justice Kennedy's any of Justice Kennedy's questions today just about how, you know, he said that he felt that the state of Colorado was unfair to the 
cake shop, Masterpiece Cake Shop, do you feel like the state of Colorado was unfair to that person? Do you like? Do you agree with that? Well, I, I do. I did read an article about uh, this. You know, it's a lot of seeing headlines the right. last week and not having time to actually click on them. Uh, yeah, but you a baby. It's a lot of wow, well, <laughs> too. Uh, yeah, so it's a lot of. If it's not written on the inside of a diaper, I probably uh, didn't see it. <laughs> but I did see enough about this. And you know, look, just to play devil's advocate with this case, look at it this way: if if a baker was asked to make a cake that has a clan hood painted on it and it says congratulations on your first lynching <laughs> they i'm using it as a very extreme example mm -hmm. but they're within their rights to say no thank you i would not like to make that so but that's not discriminatory no no i know but so then that sort of creates a where's the line you know and i think that that might actually be what justice kennedy not my example but justice kennedy i think is not he wants to hear out why this really happened and like well what where can you, as someone who provides a business, draw the line, mm -hmm. you know? Is it going to, and you know, look, it depends on where this is. In Colorado, I don't think is the case, but I, we've heard some of these cases in southern states. Uh, is it going to hurt your business if it's like, oh, you know, you, they're, the, they're the bakery that made the gay cake, you know? And then to other people, maybe, oh, we're not going to get our, our cake for our, our church picnic there. So I think it's not as cut and dried as, as people in, you know, maybe. I, I think this is a really really fascinating case because mm -hmm. I mean we don't really compel people to do things um, you can't like force an artist to create a piece of art and they're trying to claim that cake is a art anybody mm -hmm. buying that cake isn't Piece of no, art. actually, I, mean, I do love cake, actually, and it is kind of an art. It's an art form that I enjoy. But I, but I don't think in the way they mean. During is it a masterpiece? Maybe. Neil Gorsuch <laughs> said, "I don't know anybody that likes wedding cakes in general." Like he actually said that, so I thought that was very yeah. funny. Uh, Scott, do you think that a case like this can will? I mean, will open up just the opportunity for other businesses like we'll just pile on after this oh no absolutely and i think that's that's kind of going back to what christian was saying it's it's a very fine line and where is that line because it is right in the middle of our our culture wars here and extremes on both sides i've seen extremes and reading about on both sides if we allow this or we don't allow that and that is the the point is where can the justices find that that line to say okay well you have a right to do this but you don't have a right to do that or say no to certain because of your religious beliefs, then where is that line? Because then uh, where does that go as far as a religious belief for any other things that happen? I, th I see an and out for them. I see an out for them where they don't actually have to pick a winner here. What do you think? Now, how is? would they? Yes. How would so part of so the religious freedom argument requires that you see marriage as inherently religious. That's what is that's what they argue. Mm -hmm. But are atheists allowed to get married? Well, and, and yes. that's the thing. Yes. Pop quiz. But that's the, yeah. no. But that's the thing is so, that there's a so government side of it, and there's the religious side. So what it. I'm saying is, marriage is not inherently religious mm -hmm. for everybody. Right. So right because you get married in a church, but you still have right. to go. You have to go through like, file paperwork of the government. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Some ne people. Neither is cake, according to your yeah. Some <laughs> people have uh, have no no <laughs> religious <laughs> affiliation, and their their wedding is just as valid mm -hmm. as somebody who's right. you know. So. You can actually take out the fact that marriage is a religion, the religion thing. You can kind of extract the two. And here's the thing. If you show up to my business of, I don't, whatever it is, I can't even think because I'm not creative in anything. But if it's like, you know, well, what if it's there's just a saying, sign, there's you a saying sign. being a lawyer and saying, it's, I came up and I wanted to do something with my husband and you say no because of your religious beliefs, I won't do this, uh, work with you guys to put your, whatever, your will together. Like, that's what I'm saying, like, so, where is that line So here's what the, stuff? here's what I think that they all say. You can't discriminate against people because they are gay, but you have the choice about who you do business with. So what it's gonna be is like, you don't have to serve the gay couple, but you can't discriminate against them. Mm -hmm. But it's gonna be one of those covert things. You're gonna be like, oh, I see, you guys are a couple, you can't say, you got to get out of here because I don't do gay weddings. Mm -hmm. But you're going to be able to sit. You know, I've got my right to do business with who I want to do it with, and I, you know, I'm 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 closing down my cake orders for the week. Sorry, guys. So and so it's gonna. So we're gonna have sort of this. Um, it's a way we handle like age discrimination. Like you're not supposed to do it. 
legally, but does it happen? We all know mm -hmm. that it does, but it's very difficult to show that somebody like didn't get hired because of their age. And it's gonna be the same thing here. It's not gonna be okay to discriminate based on somebody being, a couple being gay, but businesses are allowed to do business with who they want to do business with. Um, they're Chris, just not gonna mm. be able to say that they're discriminating. They're just gonna say, hmm, I just don't feel like doing business with but you. But on that point, Christian, earlier today, uh, a reporter during the White House uh, press conference today. Which Sarah, I did see, because I was almost Sanders. at the gym. I actually did see that. Yeah. Uh, somebody asked her the question, um, at least in, in the arguments, uh, I guess one of the justices brought up the fact about putting a sign in the window that said, we do not serve uh, we do gay hetero people. Sexual yeah. gays um, only. Or what about the sign that a lot of businesses have up? We reserve the, the right, right to, to refuse, refuse service, service to, to anyone. anyone. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and so, but but Sarah Huckabee Sanders' response was, I, I I believe that what the president believes encompasses that. Do you think that was a smart idea? I mean, this we during the campaign we heard Donald Trump go around saying that. I mean, he waved the rainbow flag mm -hmm. and he said that he was the champion for. Do you believe that that Donald Trump believes that? That that uh, I, I actually that businesses think, believe that. I think he be believes that, that uh, it's it's bad business to you know close off like well we're not going to serve gay customers, but he also thinks that it's good politics to say that uh, it's up to the you know the actual business owner to decide who they want to serve. You know I mean I think it, it, it is less business related than politics because. You know, look. You know, are are people going to line up in West Hollywood or on Christopher Street and vote for Donald Trump in 2020? No, because Scott Moore will tell no, you that he'll, he be, be. he'll be impeached by then. <laughs> but uh, you know, it's not really. That's certainly not his base. Right. You know, and and it's not at the point where he really needs to bang the drum for this one. You know. And he's too he's too busy. Uh, well, I don't know. He's too busy moving things around in Israel. Um, <laughs> yes, and and I know we don't have a lot of time to talk about that. We might we'll talk, talk about, about that in the Trump, the Trump report. report. So but um, um, uh, real quick uh, predictions on uh, the outcome of this in terms of uh, vote count, Scott. Vote count for for this vote. I mean, I mean, it's going oh, to be five, five to four. four. It's yeah. five to four. Yeah. <laughs> the but question is which way will which Kennedy go? go? Yes, exactly. It'll be five four. We'll have to see what he he does. What do you think? What do you think Kennedy's going to do? Do you think his questions were just kind of like, hey, I just want to put it out there to test the waters? And I'm feeling really around? confident about my my middle thing where no side gets to like so claim you, victory. So you think it could be like a 4-4 four, four and an abstention? Um, no, it'll be 5-4, yeah, yeah, right, but right. it'll be for some, I don't know, watery, like, Yeah, like weak. in the middle oh, of like both sides you, you can't, can't discriminate, but discriminate. you can do business with who you want right. to. Uh, it's going to be something like that's that. That's an interesting, yeah. Hmm. Yeah, it's um, a tough one because you're right. I don't know if they're ready to make such a, a thing, even though they, uh, you know, ruled on, on marriage equality in 2015. It's it's such a hard line to figure out where that is. I, I, I agree. I think that they might not want to set the precedent mm -hmm. in either way on mm -hmm. this, you know, because then that's it's like, well, point. this is what you nine people said mm -hmm. so clearly that must be what it is going forward um but uh, in answer to drexel's question uh, i feel like it'll it'll probably pass by one in the sense of mm -hmm. uh, that the bakery can do whatever they want interesting oh, a yeah. clear win oh, for the going, bakery yeah win, win for, for the bakery, the bakery. Yeah. Yeah. Right. i'm hedging my bets by sort of agreeing with chelsea <laughs> but uh, my my like if if we were at the sports book in vegas and i was actually mm -hmm. filling out the slip right now oh. and maybe i have bet on this who knows <laughs> speaking of sports books the other case that's going on right now is whether any state can get in on this gambling business nope just no. nevada yeah mm. don't um, share uh, well, uh, well, well <laughs> I, I do want to link two cases real quick i don't want to talk about them but i do want to point out that the texas supreme court also ruled on an lgbt case um, mm -hmm. out of texas uh and whether or not the mayor of houston i believe or one mm -hmm. of the more bluer cities yes it was uh, houston. had mm -hmm. the right to Issue marriage licenses in a state where it was illegal. Or it was to like it was to extend uh, spousal, oh, spousal benefits, benefits yes. for their health insurance and everything, and if that was something that should be required if they're married. So that is going to be something that I'm sure will make its way up to. So uh, wait, Supreme hold on. Court the question well. is whether Texas will extend has to extend. Right, correct. If they have to be able to extend spousal benefits to same-sex couples. Right. 
And, and the Supreme Court, Texas Supreme Court said, said no. no. Um, so I'm sure that uh, this will make its way up to the yeah, Supreme Court. Yeah, th- I'm going to say, yeah, said, you, you do have to. Right, well, the Supreme Court yeah, decided we, not to hear it. That. Yeah. Not on yeah. the same scale, oh, though, yeah? isn't it? Just like how mm-hmm. states, it's legal to have recreational marijuana, but it's against federal law. So just because you're saying it's okay in your borders, whether it's a city or a state, doesn't mean it's actually binding if you leave the town or you leave the state. Um, but they actually I, said you couldn't do it at all. Like they're saying right. they can't do it in I Houston. See. And Speaking of the marijuana thing, by the mm-hmm. time we come back next year, right. it's going to be... It's going to be recreationally... Well, it already is, but now you'll be able to actually walk into a shop out here in California. And yeah. So Chelsea's going to have the munchies. Speaking, <laughs> speaking it of, actually might help me gain weight. This might of, be a uh, really great solution. Speaking of businesses uh, getting what weight. they want, like this bakery, um, the Donor Relief Act, or the GOP tax <laughs> scam bill, I mean the GOP tax bill, uh, passed the Senate this week. Uh, just real quick, because I don't want to talk, spend too much time on it. Because um, we hate it. Do you yeah. guys think that this is, A, going to pass in out of conference yes mm-hmm. or no and b if this is going to be politically toxic for republicans in 2018 christian well i think that it's definitely politically toxic and i think that this happening doesn't mean that you know obviously it has to reconcile with the house bill and i think that means that there's way too much time for people to sort of get the the nagging calls from you know I, w- I would like to believe constituents but honestly from donors who are going to tell them is like no this is actually how you're going to have to try and you know tailor make the con- uh, with the compromise bill um so i think that the bill as passed uh, or as passed in the senate will not pass but uh, i do think that there will be a version of it that won't actually make anyone happy but make everyone angry, you know? So there'll be something that, what's the point? But uh, I I feel like it's kind of all they have to point to right now as we look back on all of 2017. Right now, it's like, it's it's this and the the little uh, Budweiser party for uh, for healthcare. <laughs> yeah. This is really all that they yeah, have. I, I feel like people have forgotten <laughs> about this tax vote already. Chelsea, do you mm-hmm. think that... Uh, this the version that they're going to vote on uh, and potentially pass, as Christian said, uh, will be worse than the bill that just passed the Senate worse. and passed the House. Worse. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Hmm. Gosh, I don't know. Um, I hate. I like to think like it can't get much worse, but mm, just when you think, think it can't mm-hmm. get worse, um, I don't know. I'm just there. I'm. Just, I don't know. Something in me is like there's going to be a hail mary that we a factor that we currently from where we're sitting can't see that's going to you know, blindside this effort and knock it down. Uh, Scott, uh, 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 thoughts? My optimistic prediction. I know, I I certainly hope. Thoughts on Jeff Flake uh, not getting what he wanted out of DACA, Susan Collins (laughs) realizing that uh, she's not going to get what she wants out of health care, John McCain realizing Mm -hmm. that nothing was regular order as he 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 wanted. Do you think those three votes are going (laughs) to stop this in its tracks when it gets back to the Senate? I'd like to hope so, but, you know, last week... I, I thought they didn't quite have the votes, and it was the first. I wasn't as confident as I was for healthcare because all year long I was like, "There's no way healthcare is going to ever pass." This one, I thought there's a chance, and when everyone came to it and they did in the Senate, um, I thought, "Okay, well now there's a pretty good shot now that it, it'll it'll reconcile and it'll be there by the end of the year because they have nothing else for them, and if they can not get anything signed at the end of the year, uh, they have nothing to to stand for. And they have um, nothing to run on. They have nothing to run on, and, and then you're going to be distracted when, when Roy Moore wins next week. <laughs> and then you have Trump with Russia, and they're going to have a really bad uh, year for Republicans next year. So I'd like to think they won't pass it, but I am now leaning on the chance that they will reconcile to some degree. I think, if anything, it's going to hew closer to the Senate, uh, Senate's final, because of the fact that they can't lose as many people in the Senate as they can in the House and still pass. They can lose like 20 right. something members in the House, where they can only lose like two in, in the Senate. So I think, if anything, it's going to go more towards what the Senate had gone for when they tried to reconcile the House bill. But we'll see. I mean, like Chelsea said, there's always that chance of that Hail Mary. There's always something else that'll come through. The constituents come through enough to just help to kill it. But we'll, we'll see what happens in the next week or so. Uh, if you've been watching on here, we threw up. Uh Uh, I believe the New York Times or somebody created this chart of how much Mm -hmm. each family or taxpayer gains or loses uh, with this tax bill between uh, 2019 uh, and 2027. If you are uh, making uh, less than $50,000, it looks like uh, you're screwed. 
Uh, although Paul Ryan liked to uh, tout that uh, families uh, would be able to save $1,000 a year, uh, to which I remind him that $1,000 right. uh, can't pay for the uh, new car and the... Uh, yeah, that was really funny. <laughs> or, or the women and the booze, <laughs> as, uh, yes. as Chuck Brown Women and booze have gone up a lot since uh, Obama left. I, yeah. I, every once in a while, will find myself over on Fox News, because, mm -hmm. uh, .com, because I, I, I want to see I, I'm how, curious, too. Yeah. How are that, they? No, I have to try to do it just that. to see what, how, how they're, they're selling it. Yeah. yeah. And so the article I read was like, five myths that the Democrats mm -hmm. are using. And it's all the, you know, the standard points that we're making about this. And he says, yeah, it's, it's going to give people, you know, big tax breaks. And I'm like, dude, Paul Ryan, did you in? Because he already said that families are, you know, gonna get around a thousand dollars. Right. So, um, but I was making this point. Uh, I was making this point yesterday to somebody, and, and I want to move on. But uh, I was making this point yesterday that I that the when people who are in I, I won't say just middle America, but like in in cities where the poverty rate is pretty high, in their head, to, at least in my opinion, a thousand dollars sounds like a lot of money. Oh yeah, and right. so that's how Republicans can sell this piece mm -hmm. of trash because it looks to them people they're like, well, it's a thousand dollars. Except, that you can do somewhere else. except that generally a family of four making under $40,000 a year doesn't pay federal income mm -hmm. taxes. So it's not going to make a difference right. for them. Right. And But as we've seen, uh, if you live in California or New Jersey or New York, mm -hmm. uh, which uh, there are a lot of uh, a lot of poor people um, and uh, and the cost well, of and we're going to get a lot poorer because we right. have major state taxes right, and right. we can't which write those off. They and have now. Wait, and, Scott, and this, mortgage, might, this is a Scott question here. Do does California have enough Republican um, reps? With, same with New Jersey and New York. To if they vote no. It wouldn't get out of the house because these three states. Yes, but they would all have to vote no, and I think what they're trying to do is sweeten the pot for some states and others. They were working. That's what happened last time. They did a lot with with New York and New Jersey reps to be able to um, help them push it through. And then, of course, most of the California people signed on it because they claimed, "Oh, it'll be fixed," you know, in in the Senate before it comes back to us. So, pretty much every Republican did, except uh, Daryl Issa. I think there were what three people. The three Republicans that yep. didn't sign it the or that said no the first time around, but yes, technically yes. If all every single Republican on all three states uh, in in the House said no, then that would be just enough, but barely. Okay, I'm hanging my metaphor. Um, yeah. here's, here's what I'm banking on as we go into 2018. I am banking on a West Wing style <laughs> shutdown of the government uh, pretty soon mm -hmm. because I'm really hoping that Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer. Uh, stick it to the Republicans. Mm -hmm. uh, 2017 uh, was a whirlwind for us, and I know for America. So last time we were all together in this studio, uh, we were doing election results. Um, so mm -hmm. we thought it would be a good idea to talk about some of the highlights of uh, 2017 in politics. Uh, we're going to start with uh, our favorite top stories of 2017. Uh, Christian, what is your favorite? What was your top story of 2017? What did I put on the, uh, the document? <laughs> <laughs> because uh, I'm trying to think now. It was really clear in my mind last week. Uh, but, I mean, look. Do, do you hear it here? It's <laughs> <Right, laughs> <that's> right here. <laughs> what did I think? What, my uh, top story. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, this ties I need that back. everything. Uh, <laughs> then I'll need You're it gonna back. You're going to need it back. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah no, I think that, that cheat. Um, I actually figured it had something to do with Trump. And, look, mm -hmm. the top story is just sort of, the, he's, he's doing it right now, today. Mm -hmm. He's still doing it every day, even before he was sworn in, even before he was elected. Just the manipulation of the media. Right. And uh, it's obviously, if you don't like what he has to say, you can find it abhorrent. But uh, on just a, just a fundamental level, it's brilliant the way he's able to do it right. and consistently do it. Mm -hmm. And just like, oh, you know, people, the, the heat's a little too hot on this. Uh, you know, we have a real problem. It's the NFL. You know, and then it's anytime there's anything going on, you know, like we, we referenced briefly the fact that, uh, you know, uh, let's uh, let's let's switch the capital of Israel. You know, let's do that. Right. You know, it's like, what else is going on this week? Don't worry about it. You should be angry about that right now. Yeah, yeah there's, a, there's Is that there's, a real thing that's going to happen tomorrow? It is going to yes. happen tomorrow. Mm -hmm. and I know we're, we're we'll uh, talk about it on the uh, yeah. in the next hour. Um, Scott, your uh, top story of 2017. Well, kind of on on. What Christian was saying, it's sort of that alternative facts. It's sort of that loss of, of truth and 
and taking you know actual factual evidence and now it's people can be in their own corner and you can just shout out fake news and not true and that started basically with Trump, but now it's accelerated in all other aspects now of politics. And it's really actually kind of scary to see where we're getting to. Because when you think about it, when you kind of lose the actual fact-based evidence on things, um, where does that lead? Because then, like we said, we see Roy Moore now in the polls, and there's a good chance he's going to win next week in Alabama because people are like, oh, well, this is a, a whole liberal thing to, to you know discredit him and you know, the, the and, 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 and all these other things now to where people, you, you have a hard time knowing what is really true anymore because it's so fogged up now and clouded up by everyone's allegiance to certain things, and it's really a very scary place to be because even if you get rid of Trump in the next uh, year or so, um, you're still left with people that are going to continue to believe these conspiracy theories and other things that he's been on the forefront of doing. And um, just it, it, it does frighten me of, of the future of our country to kind of get back to, yes, we can all agree on certain things that are all fact-based, and now we don't really have that anymore. Because if Trump says the sky is red and everyone says no, it, you know, liberals say, oh, no, it's blue, but then you're going to have a 25% of the country is going to say, well, no, it's, it's red because that's what he says, and it's red, and you guys have been lying this whole time. And that's what gets kind of scary uh, if we lose that. And we're, we're kind of heading in that direction. And that's what we've seen this year. Uh, Chelsea, your top story? Um, it's, a, it's not a single story, but it is the when Trump announced his nominees for cabinet positions, mm -hmm. uh, it was like if anybody had any hopes of draining the swamp, he has introduced the king and que queen of alligators. I guess the only queen would have been like Betsy DeVos and... Mm -hmm. Elaine Chow, Elaine Chow. Um, and so mm -hmm. I, I hate to do it, but it was like a told you so moment for me mm -hmm. um, when everybody that was nominated was somebody who like hated the agency that they were about to <laughs> mm -hmm. run. So I kind of liked my little moment of being like, see guys, and and I've seen like on social media even some people who were like, I'm going to give Trump a chance. I'm going to give him a chance. We should all give him a chance. The moment that those nominations came out, chance is over. Mm -hmm. And I think people, there was the, you know that middle ground of people who were like, I just want something different. Maybe he's going to do something different. Maybe he will. Be. They just had this little hope that somehow he was going to be something different from mm -hmm. what he appeared on the campaign. But he wasn't Hillary Clinton. I think there are people who are <clears throat> regretful of their votes seeing these uh, appointments and what these people are doing to the um, the departments. I mean, if people know about it, because you kind of have to really know. Like, I didn't know about what was going on in the USDA or the EPA mm -hmm. until I read those Michael Lewis articles about how there's basically nobody there. Mm -hmm. and, and you can learn all about that by watching old episodes of this show. Um, <laughs> That'll keep you warm over the holiday <laughs> season. Yeah, go back and watch uh, or go back and listen to a lot of... Um, a, a lot of these shows. Um, I, I, my my top story uh, is actually across the world, uh, which is in Libya. The Libya's sl the Libyan mm -hmm. slave trade, uh, which is happening right now. Um, a lot of migrants uh, going into Libya, being um, traded as slaves. We saw photos of it. If you haven't, mm -hmm. look it up because it's a little crazy. Wait, this is highlights of 2017 for you. This is this is like top stories. Top of stories, not your favorite. Story. Favorite. Not favorite. Not favorite. Story. Sorry, top story. We even put up a graphic that yeah. said top stories of 2017. Um, okay, I'm just checking. Oh my goodness, because I was top like, stories. Yeah, not my favorite no. story, but definitely a story that I think that... It's something uh, that needs attention. Definitely uh, needs uh, attention in really the about Charlie Puth way. Yeah, um, it's very important. <laughs> like you said, people are passing through, like migrants are passing through. Like, and they're yeah. being used as slaves, yes, and it's on, it's uh, on... it's a little crazy. I mean, it's, it's like, like watching... There's like a video of it. Yeah. Somebody, mm -hmm. an, a reporter went in and saw it with their own eyes. Yeah, it's and, like and, watching, like, like when America had slaves... Yeah. In like real time, yes, and, like we're in they it. auction them off in the middle of the night, off, yeah. and they it's generally insane. go for about four hundred dollars, or the equivalent of about four hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. and, and this is not that, like we're not talking about like watching Get Out. Like we're not talking about mm -hmm. that. We're like this is real life. So uh, if you don't know any about that, mm -hmm. uh, definitely check it out because uh, it is definitely one of the stories that uh, probably will go into 2018 yes. and be a huge humanitarian crisis. But you would never know because Trump doesn't care about black people. Um, and, it's, and it's something very important to keep in mind. Strikes will becoming Kanye 2.0. <laughs> uh, let's go. Uh, top social media moments. Uh, social media obviously played a huge role uh, in.
in uh, electing Donald Trump, um, in taking down Hillary Clinton uh, through WikiLeaks and John Podesta. Uh, so, um, Scott, uh, did you have a top uh, – uh, one of your favorite moments uh, in social media this year? Well, favorite would be hard because I think everything that Trump tweets just annoys and angers me. But, you know, it goes back to almost the beginning of the year when he talked about Obama wiretapping him. Uh, just a complete blatant lie. And then the Kofifi tweet, oh, I think, yes. is definitely up there yeah. as will always be. the biggest one of the year. Because is there such just, thing as um, butt tweeting? I know, like instead of butt dialing, know, butt tweeting. Do you think that was a butt tweet? And the fact they left it up there for like an hour before <laughs> any kind of thing happened, or the whole night, or whatever it was, because I remember it was like in the middle of the summer. And or, I remember, but, I still remember Drexel's comment. Yeah. It was like on Facebook or what? Yeah. It was like somebody please help him. Yeah, well, we thought I maybe stroke down. Though. <laughs> no. was it, wasn't that a, yet another instance where there was a big story going on at the moment, and then all of a sudden everybody talked about Kofi? Yeah. So it's almost like, oh, is it is it accidental? Is it funny? Right, and that's what we yeah we, we, we talked, talked about. about on, I think we talked about the show. Trump report. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, so Christian. those are definitely my biggest. Um, and I I actually thought about this and I tried to isolate one and I I just don't know how. I think you any. Can't. Trump tweet that has sad exclamation point in it. <laughs> yeah. It's always like, it's not actually sad. Why are you saying that? But it, it he doesn't it, know emotions. Well, that's true. He's not programmed that way. But I think that there's just <laughs> He's it, programmed in the Russian way. Right. Yeah. The, the Manchurian <laughs> candidate yes. way, just not in the way that we think. <laughs> so I think that really what it comes down to is just the it, it does go back to my earlier answer, just the sheer reach that he has. You know, and it's like for all the Kofivis that are funny, there's, you know, what, a hundred or a thousand more where you're just like, oh, no. And I think, by the way, that Trump single handedly was responsible for Twitter expanding the character count because nobody utilizes it more than he does now. You know, he, I do. Well, I to tweet out things from this account. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Chelsea, uh, your favorite uh, moments? Um, I don't. OK. The ones that stick out in my mind, I don't know if they're favorite, but maybe most memorable, are the Rocket Man tweets and the I tried to be nice to him, but mm -hmm. he doesn't like me tweet. Mm -hmm. And oh, yeah, that and, one gave rise to so many funny things. It's memes. not like yes, I said that he was short and fat. Yes. Oh, yes, that was all, a great one, too. Yeah, so, so really, just isolating all of the Kim Jong Un. Yeah, that would be like a whole that Greatest would be. collection. Because yeah. they, they had the ones where it was like the teenage girl and like basically putting it in the meme with uh, with his tweets and everything and, and it was what he said. Yeah, it's pretty yeah. funny. And then my most recent, I guess probably pretty soon my favorite one will be the one he sent out this weekend that said, I fired Flynn because he lied to the vice president oh, and yeah. the FBI. And by saying he, yeah. he lied to the FBI, he's acknowledging right. that he knew. Exactly. That he, I was justice. like, obstruction of justice. But he right didn't there. write the tweet. Okay. Now that was Allegedly. his lawyer. Allegedly. I, I don't know, but, when, but put, putting the dots together, months ago, people asked, I think it was Sarah Huckabee Sanders. It was after Sean Spicer. Well, they asked is her a again tweet, today. Yeah. Is a tweet an official statement? And she uh, said, answered it again yes. today that it was yes, that they acknowledged that their mm -hmm. official statements from the White House. So mm -hmm. that tweet was an official statement right. from the White House. I, I, I think any judge would. would, would is that, and, is and that retroactive? So the White House officially thinks Rosie O'Donnell's a fat pig? Or yes. is it only <laughs> since he's been president? <laughs> oh, that's funny. Um, um, my favorite uh, social media moment was not from a politician, definitely not from Donald Trump. Uh, we obviously went through this whole year. We just talked about living history, so I'm clearly on a black people role right now. Um, but. Uh, Obviously, we were going through Charlottesville. We were going through different types of uh, things earlier this year. And Kendall Jenner, Ken Kendall Jenner uh, and Pepsi thought it would be a good idea to create a commercial uh, with Kendall Jenner extending the Pepsi <laughs> across the way uh, to the cops, I guess. I don't know, I don't know what it was. Uh, but uh, that obviously had uh, a big effect on social media, and people got a little crazy. I thought it was a little crazy. Um, I think mm -hmm. uh, some of, of course, across America, um, the Barack Obama was the most, had the most retweets this year um, in his Nelson Mandela uh, quote. Uh, he had that actually top three retweets mm -hmm. of the year. Oh, uh, The Nelson Mandela uh, quote, the one about John McCain, um, and then uh, there was one other one, but um, I don't feel like looking and, it up. And the resist hashtag was the most uh, used hashtag this year, too, which is pretty cool. Uh -huh. Yeah. Higher than any of the other, uh, th higher than MAGA, which you thought, okay, that was probably in everything because then people that were making fun of it, too. But resist was number one hashtag. Mm. Cool. I, I feel like resist will continue to be mm -hmm. uh, the hashtag of 20. 
um, 18. Um, if you're watching on Twitter, we're try I'm trying to pull up the results. On Twitter? Uh, oh, man, sorry. If you're watching you on YouTube, mm. uh, I'm trying to pull up the results of things that are happening yeah, in Atlanta, Atlanta right now. Um, it looks like uh, right now it's still like super early in Atlanta. I mean, not super early. It's 9 o'clock in Atlanta, and only 1% of the city is reporting. Uh, for those who are not following or who have not been following this race, this is another kind of, I feel like, Trump referendum, like a referendum on the Republican Party because Mary Norwood, who's running for Atlanta mayor, she's the Republican candidate um, or the Republican S candidate. Um, she's not from Atlanta. She is uh, a. She kind of tried to run as like as a. I don't know what she tried to run as, but not like as a Republican. But she's like a Republican in sheep's clothing. Mm -hmm. And uh, you've got uh, Keisha Lance Bottoms, who's the Democrat uh, there, who's from Atlanta. And uh, so best of luck to Keisha out of um, Atlanta right now. Yeah, well, I loved I, her on the Cosby Show. <laughs> Why did they think though that that Norwood could actually pull out the win because too many people were is, were split on on who was more progressive there because you know Atlanta itself is 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 a very liberal uh, city. I, I think it's gonna I think it's gonna come out to I think and, and this is between uh, uh, this week and next week this race uh, in Atlanta uh, and next week's race in Alabama. Um, will all come down just like the 2016 election mm -hmm. uh, to African Americans. I mean, literally, if yeah, African Americans do not vote in Atlanta mm -hmm. tonight, uh, Keisha Lance Bottoms will lose a race that Republicans have never won uh, in a long time in right. the state of Atlanta. I mean, the and city of Atlanta. Yeah, um, and on the other <laughs> side, if black folks don't get out and vote for Doug Jones, Doug Jones, if you have not do donated mm -hmm. to Doug Jones, do so uh, in the next week. Uh, and if you're in Alabama and you're watching this or listening to this, uh, make sure you get out and vote for Doug Jones um, as well because mm -hmm. um, he actually cares about black people having prosecuted uh, people who blew up a church uh, killing four uh, black girls uh, back in, you know, civil rights time. Mm -hmm. um, next up, uh, favorite um, politician of the year. Close the show out with politician of the I year. I take that word favorite out of there. I know. Pol we'll sorry, politician, out of there. <laughs> politician of the year. Chelsea, who was your politician of the year? Did I write something? Do I need to, yeah. I, I need a reminder. Oh, yeah. And now I, I still can't even remember What's his, his name? name. Oh, my so goodness. The guy who was like the, the activist protester. There's like pictures of him, and he looks every bit the, frankly, the stereotype of what we think of as an activist. His name is Braxton Winston. Yeah. He is and the city councilman, out, now city councilman, out of Charlotte. Yes. And he like that. took that activism <laughs> right to the city council. Yeah. And became city council member. I. I like that story. Christian, your your I don't like that, of that he has two names and they're both last names, <laughs> Braxton and Winston. Uh, well, I, I like you know, it. again, this is why I had to clarify not favorite. <clears throat> Look, there's a theme for everything that I picked. Once I was reminded of what I picked, uh, it has to it has to be President Trump, just because nobody has figured out how to politic as well as he has in such a short amount of time. I mean, he's really only been a politician for a couple years now. And when we go back to the media manipulation and the incessant tweets, uh, nobody, I can't think of a politician that shapes the dialogue the way that President Trump does. President Obama didn't to this extent. I mean, I think that sure, you know, when he, when he was elected, but on a day-to-day -day basis, people are talking about what Trump wants us to talk about. Right. And, uh, you know, it, it, for, for for worse or for worst, that's what's happening. <laughs> Scott, you're a fa um, not your favorite, but your politician of the year. I mean, definitely you have to go with Donald Trump on that on that aspect alone. But I'm I'm actually going to say, because I know you had somebody down that I also was a very big supporter of. <laughs> but um, I have to say Susan Collins in the sense that out of all of the Republicans, even more than John McCain and Lisa Murkowski, has been the one that, to me, has felt the most principled, that we just don't have anymore um, when it comes to certain things where it's like we're just down to the party line. Like, I feel like she's the only Republican out there in, in uh, you know, that sort of uh, in Congress or anything that actually really does seem to value what her constituents need rather than the bottom line of like, okay, what are my, you know, donors want or, or this or that. And, and yes, she's a little bit fortunate because of out of the, those other two, she's in a very blue state. And so she has a luxury being a little bit more to liberal and her other senators and independent. But um, it is very refreshing to see in like her former counterpart, uh, Olympia Snow, they used to be those two kind of moderate voices and the Republicans that you just 
don't see anymore. And so I've appreciated watching her be very thoughtful and candid and why she's doing what she's doing and, and voting uh, the way she did um, a, against the health care repeal and being thoughtful even on the tax thing, even though I was disappointed that she ended up voting yes. And I, I, I find it refreshing to see that. And I wish there were more uh, Republicans who were still in office who had decided not to run again that would be like the Jeff Flakes of the world and everything uh, and the Bob Corkers that still could uh, stand up to their principles um, and and I thought that was very refreshing this year from her. Well, we might get a Senator Romney uh, mm-hmm. if uh, I mean he's got a really he's really popular in Utah, like still at this point like he could beat Orrin Hatch if he. But ran. I think it'll, I think Orrin Hatch would step aside and then support. Romney the other way around. I don't know yeah. if he would actually go and run against him. Well, if Donald Trump has anything to say, Mitt Romney will yeah, not be the next uh, senator. <laughs> because he's a loser. <laughs> uh, my politician of the year, uh, Danica Rome, uh, mm-hmm. the assembly w- uh, woman from, uh, or the delegate, sorry, not assembly yes, woman, the delegate, delegate. from mm-hmm. uh, Virginia who just won uh, her delegate race uh, a few, a few, a couple of months, or last month. Uh, she's the first transgender delegate out of the House of Delegates in Virginia, but not the first transgender uh, elected official across the country. So definitely want to make that mm-hmm. distinction. Uh, but uh, she's doing big things. Things that she said right out the gate, like the night of her election, that I thought were really impressive and uh, really embodied what, at least to me, what politicians should be like. Mm-hmm. Should say, listen, I beat my, I beat this person. This person is now my constituent. Mm-hmm. And I will not be speaking ill of them because they they now are somebody that I am representing. And mm-hmm. if all of our politicians could be right. uh, like that, then uh, we probably would be in a better place. We would uh, be. And she's very thoughtful in what she says. And she sticks to the wonky things that she said the voters put her in for, which yeah. was, you know, infrastructure and yeah. things like that that affect day-to-day people. And, and I just love the fact that she beat the guy who was the biggest homophobe who actually called himself right. that. Um, I think that's great uh, karma. And I wish her well and, and very excited to see what she does uh, next year. I well. also believe she was a run for something candidate. Our partner uh, on mm-hmm. this show, Run for Something, uh, they got a lot of candidates coming out. Mm-hmm. Uh, so go to runforsomething.com or if you are interested in running for office, definitely go to runforsomething.com. Mm-hmm. Uh, if you have your Great. favorite, if you have your politician of the year, leave it in the comments uh, below because we definitely always love your uh, viewer and listener feedback. Uh, so continue to leave your comments and thoughts on the show or anything you heard uh, today either via Twitter uh, at politicalbeattv or email us at politicalbeat.com. TV at gmail.com. We'll be back in January with uh, all new things to talk about. Maybe the government will be shut down, so maybe we won't have a lot of stuff to talk about. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, and all new guests. Uh, if you're watching live or on YouTube, stick around because part two of our year interview continues with the Trump Report. If you're listening, head over to the Trump Report podcast uh, for more of our thoughts. Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, Happy Kwanzaa, Happy Holidays. And Happy New Year from all of us here at AfterBuzz TV. Uh, Subscribe to Political Beat on iTunes. And we'll see you all next year uh, right here on the Political Beat. Stick around. We'll be right back. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principal.